So if you can't hear me, just hold up your hand. So I mean, I think the few, the students I've worked with this week in the play studio will tell you, yes, she has a voice. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, I'm happy to be here, and thank you all for coming. Um, I, I, of course, live in North Carolina now. It is my home. I was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. And um, I've always liked art. From out, when I was young, I liked art. And in my high school yearbook, where it says, what are you going to be when you grow up? I said, well, I'm going to be an artist. Not quite knowing what that was, but I, I knew that I liked doing it. So anyway, I ended up at the Memphis Academy of Art and to be a painting major. And in the first year I was there, you had to take jewelry one semester and play the next semester. So um, I really liked both of them. And then the next year I took play again and found out every spare minute I had, I was in the play studio trying to learn to throw pots. And this was a long time ago. There were no electric wheels. It was all kick wheels. So I would be there all day. They'd throw me out of the building at night. I learned to fire the kiln from, there was one student ahead of me, learned to fire the kiln with that, with watching him do it. And uh, so they, at the school, there was a student who lived at the school who was sort of the night watch person. So if you could find him, you could get in the building at night <laughs> and work. So, and that was a lot of trouble because it was a concrete block building with these big doors and stuff. So Jack, who fired the kilns, he would get in the buildings and I could go turn them up. So one day I said to him, I said, uh, can I borrow your key? And he said, yeah. So he loaned me his key. And I went out and got a copy of it. <laughs> <laughs> so that worked really well for months and months. And then one day I get this message. Cynthia, Ted wants to see you. He's the director. Ted Rose. Wonderful person. I go into his office. He says, CB. I said, yes, TR. <laughs> Do you have a key to this building? I said, yes, I do. He said, well, can I have it? I said, yeah, I don't have it on me. I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Because <laughs> I had to go out and get another key. <laughs> <laughs> then the next year, um, I, w I was, a, the next year I was a senior. So they did, they said, Okay, we're, we're putting you on a special program, <laughs> honors program. I said, okay. I said, what is that? They said, you can do anything you want. <laughs> so, no role was taken for me in any class. I could take any classes I wanted to. So that was perfect. So anyway, I finished there, went to Alfred University, to graduate school, got out of graduate school, went back to Memphis, found a place to set up a studio. It was a house way out in the country. It should have been bulldozed. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I turned it into a living space. And my sister, Edwina, at the time, was an x-ray technician. So Edwina would come help on this house on the weekend. So um, the kitchen was torn up to the subfloor the bathtub was in the living room. Um, anyway, I laid floors, I caulked, I put in windows. Our two local carpenters, one could read and write and the other one couldn't. I got some old windows for what was going to be the studio. And I with chalk, I'd mark on the floor. This is where a window goes. And in between, I just worked at it. So I. You know, I've been making plots full time for a long time, and when I started, um, people would say to my parents, they'd say, well, it's nice that he has a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> and my father would look at him and he'd say, it's not her hobby, it's her business. 
So luckily, I, we grew up with parents that said, do whatever you want to do, just do it the best you can. So, um, which was terrific. So, when I started doing this full time, there weren't many potters in there. So it was strange to a lot of people, that's what I was doing. So, um, I went and talked to ladies gardening clubs and book clubs <laughs> to educate them. And I would take work and explain it to them and tell them that I was out to replace all the plastic in the <laughs> And the truth is, I'm still working with that. <laughs> because people need to, handmade pots, be they like, Becky, um, Kay's wonderful cups or Becky's or Susan's. When you hold something in your hand that is made by someone else, you get the feeling of the hand. It's not like commercial work that you can buy anywhere. I mean, people say, well, this is expensive. I said, you want to spend a week here and watch how long it takes to make all this stuff? You know, people don't understand that part of it. So if you watch a potter work, I can make it look easy. You know, I can throw a pot in a couple of minutes. People go, all right. <laughs> And that's going to cost me $35. I went, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so my work is, you can see, is, um, I mean, if someone says I want a dozen of something, I can sit down and do that. But this is how I work. My work is very diverse. I think in lots of different ways. Coffee mugs, the soup bowls, all of that. They go into a dishwasher. They go in your microwave, they're meant to be used. I told someone earlier, you take those white porcelain goblets and put cheap wine in and it tastes really good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm really, I'm known for form and function and, and brush work that comes from being a painter. But, I, you know, now I'm doing a lot of carving on pieces because I like the way the facets work around it around the word and what it means and then you'll see things with like fish handles or turtles on the side so you'll say well where did those turtles come from I, well i always like turtles why do i like turtles okay they plod along and they get there <laughs> so and and that's what we're all hopefully doing in life we're just plodding along and get to the other side so like these are wood fired I mean, these are actually, um, these porcelain pieces, these two were wood fired in Dan Finch's kiln in Bayless. So, this is porcelain. Porcelain shrinks a lot. So, when you make something in clay, you have to think about shrinking. So, stoneware shrinks only about 14%. So, this piece was maybe that big. This is porcelain. It shrinks 20%. It was that big. So, it, I mean, we all know it shrinks. It comes out, and you open it up, and look at it in the kiln, and you go, damn. <laughs> 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 no matter how long you've done this, you cannot believe it shrinks out. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you all for being here. I'm going to turn it over to the